Hi guys. Um, I've been promising for a while now to get you guys a video um, on how I heat bond my earrings. And so today's the day. Um, this is the heat bond that I use. Um, it's a red package. It's from Walmart. Uh, I think it's about $8. It's called Heat and Bond. And it is the permanent kind. There's a couple different kinds. Um, I think there's one in a blue package that's light and it's meant for uh, sewing hems and such. So you use it on the hem and then you sew over it. So uh, those heat and bonds are not gonna stay um, adhered as well as this one is. This is actually a no sew uh, permanent bond. So, and it's heat and bond ultra hold is what this one's called. Um, <clears throat> it comes in tape form. It comes in um, kind of a folded flat package. Um, I just prefer the roll just because it's more and it lasts longer. Um, this is actually, as long as the roll was, I just cut it to 12 inches so I could use it on my 12 inch material that goes on my 12 inch mat. So I just cut it for ease. So what we're gonna do is take uh, some faux leather. So I have a piece of faux leather here it's textured on one side, uh, kind of a, it looks textured, but it's really not. Um, it's like a fuzzy fabric material on the back. I believe this is from Hobby Lobby um, on the big upholstery uh, bolts in the fabric department. So um, I have two pieces of the faux leather about the same size. Now you're gonna take a piece of heat bond. This is the heat bond. It is a textured, I can get it to show it to you better. Um, it's textured, it's not sticky. Uh, it's kind of rubbery feeling and it's textured. This is uh, paper. I don't ever leave the paper on after I heat bond something. I've had some people ask me about that and um, I don't ever leave the paper on. I always pull it off, even if I'm just leaving heat and bond on the back of my material. So you cut your material uh, or you cut your heat bond the size of your material. Uh, you put the heat bond textured side down on the back of your material. And uh, I have a heat press. It's set to 300. Um, you can use an iron. You can use an easy press. I don't have an easy press, so I don't know what um, the setting would be for that, but I'm sure it's similar. Um, so I have 300. I put my fabric or my faux leather side down, paper side of the heat bond up cover with my Teflon sheet <clears throat> and I'm going to press it for about 10 seconds. Um, some people use a lower heat. Some people uh, don't press it as long. Um, this is what works for me. Um, it's a lot of trial and error. Um, heat presses are different. Um, there's a lot of different stuff that goes into uh, figuring out uh, what's going to work best for you, but this is what works best for me. 300 um, the first time I put it in, I heat it for 10 seconds. So after your heat bond cools a little bit, you're gonna pull it off the back of your material. Well, let me clarify. You're gonna pull the paper off the back of your material. So this is trash now. This is the paper backing. So now we have a rubbery side to um, our faux leather. It's the back side. This is the front, this is the back. And it's a smooth, rubbery feeling now. Some people stop here and just use the heat and bond to stabilize their material before they cut. Um, the Hobby Lobby material, that stretches really easily and it's really hard to cut. You can add the heat bond to the back. It stabilizes it so it doesn't stretch and it gives it a um, smooth finish on the back so it uh, sticks to your mat better. But I always add something to the back of my earrings. I didn't always, but um, after I started wearing my earrings, I realized that they turn backwards, they turn sideways, no matter what you do pretty much. I don't have long hair, obviously, to cover them, so I didn't like the way that the plain um, earring looked on the back. This is stiffened felt, and this is fabric that I've heat bonded on the back of these. So after I started wearing them and realizing that you could see the back, I wanted to uh, add something to the back just because I don't like selling stuff that I wouldn't wear myself. Um, <clears throat> you can add, here's the pink Hobby Lobby 
uh, faux leather, pebbled faux leather with heat bond on the back. Um, I mean with, sorry, HTV on the back. Uh, no heat bond because HTV is made to adhere to something. Uh, so this is glitter canvas and I have heat bonded fabric on the back. So we're talking any kind of fabric. Um, the possibilities are endless with the fabric. Uh, I follow the same process with the fabric. I just use the fabric in place of the second piece of my faux leather here. So <clears throat> after I have um, the heat bond on the first piece, so I have the front of the faux leather here, I have the heat bond in the middle, and then I have um, the back side of that, the second piece of faux leather on the heat bond. So it's sandwiched in between. So front faux leather, front of the faux leather, heat bond in between. So I put it back in my heat press, <clears throat> again on 300, and I press for about 20, 25 seconds, usually about 20. You'll have to test your material. Maybe take a little square or something and test um, how your material is gonna hold up to the heat. Uh, some of the vinyl and faux leather does melt, so um, you definitely want to test it first and make sure that it's going to hold up to um, being under the heat for that long. So now what I have is the faux leather. Um, it's still a little um, warm so you can see what the heat, heat bond is. But um, the two pieces of faux leather now are bonded together with the heat bond in the middle. Um, I use a brayer. <clears throat> this is from Hobby Lobby. Um, it's made or it's used in um, ink printing uh, where you put the ink on the stamp and then roll the brayer over it. So um, I'm pretty sure I got this with the ink stuff in Hobby Lobby, but I do think they sell a Mod Podge brand brayer. It's just a rubber roller. So Michael's Hobby Lobby, anywhere like that. I'm not sure about Walmart, probably not. Um, <clears throat> I'm using a green mat. I don't always, use, or I usually never use a green mat. I use a purple strong mat, but I don't really have any sticky ones right now and I didn't clean any. So um, this one's brand new, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use the green. Um, <clears throat> what you're gonna do is put your uh, material, since it's both, it's the same on both sides, you don't have to worry about what side you put down, um, and then just roll your brayer over it so um, it is nice and stuck. Uh, I'm using a deep cut blade. For most of the faux leathers, you don't really need a deep cut blade. However, if you're bonding it and putting two pieces together, it's going to obviously be thicker. Um, so the thicker material usually needs the deep cut blade. I use the deep, deep cut blade for everything I cut for my earrings just so I don't have to guess whether it's gonna go through or not. So um, I have an Air 2 um, deep cut blade and I'm cutting it on the dim bonded setting. Uh, I usually create custom settings for my materials. That way I'm not having to remember what I put it on. Um, glitter canvas, plastic folders, um, stiffened felt. I'll just create a custom setting named to whatever my material is and give it a pressure and a multi-cut. You can do all that in your material settings. Um, you can add new ones. You can also adjust the defaults um, on the materials that are already in design space. But um, usually if I bond two pieces together though, I use denim bonded setting. Um, I have found that that one works and that's easy enough to remember since I've bonded the material. It's easy enough to remember that that's what I need to use. But like I said, if I'm using faux leather, I mean uh, glitter canvas or stiffened felt um, plastic folders, I always create custom settings for the, I guess you would say the unusual materials. Um, just makes it easier for me to remember. So. Um, let that cut real quick. I just wanted to show you what it looks like after it comes out. <coughs> so this is what you're gonna have afterwards. Um, it is double-sided faux leather heat bond in the middle. 
Now, you see all these little fuzzies that are around um, a lot of the uh, material after you cut. You can take a lighter really quickly around the edge and you can just um, get rid of those little fuzzies. And when I say really quick, I mean really quick. Usually you don't have to be that quick with this material, but um, some of the vinyl, uh, you have to be pretty thick. So that cleans it up, um, no more fuzzies. So uh, that's really it guys, that's what um, I do. I have actually used um, heat bond to bond. This is actually a gift bag, just like Hallmark gift bag. Um, it, uh, I like the, the, the color, sorry, the pattern. So I wanted to use it and see how it worked. I heat bonded this, um, material gift bag cardstock almost to the back of this glitter canvas. So, um, I don't know how well it'll hold up, but it's pretty stiff. Um, like I said, kind of like a thick cardstock, so it should hold up. I don't know why it wouldn't. Um, but you can heat bond tons of stuff. You can go to Goodwill and find old shirts that you like with the print um, fabric you get at um, Joann's, Walmart, Hobby Lobby, anywhere. Um, you can do the two pieces of the faux leather. I don't like this side. It's they're not very pretty. <laughs> so I'm always going to either double this with the heat bond or add the HTB. But I'm gonna go over the steps real quick again. So uh, you take your two pieces of your faux leather or faux leather and fabric or whatever you're gonna use on the back. You put the textured side of the heat bond down on the back of one side of your material. You put it in your heat press, your iron, your easy press. Uh, I use paper, I put it paper side up, put the Teflon sheet over it, and I press for 10 seconds at 300 degrees. Um, after it comes out and cools, you pull the paper off, that goes in the trash. Uh, you put your second piece of your material backside down on your um, heat bond and um, put it back in your heat press. And put the Teflon sheet over it, press at 300 for 20 seconds um, and that's it and then you put it obviously in your machine and cut it but for the heat bond that's it um, uh, let's see lost my train of thought oh a lot of people ask if it's too thick to go through your material since it's double-sided now I've never found a material that I couldn't cut that I doubled um, I haven't found any faux leather, I haven't found any glitter canvas, felt, um, anything like that that I couldn't cut. Now, genuine leather, I use genuine leather sometimes, but I don't double it. So I would think that that would probably be too thick to go um, through your machine if it's genuine leather since it's thicker. So, um, but I've never found one yet that I couldn't cut. And this, it, it really helps because you're not having to cut your two pieces, your two teardrops, and then line them up, and then make sure they go in your heat press lined up and cut your heat bond, the shape of your teardrop. You know, it just, it's so much easier. It saves so much time if you heat bond your material before. Yes, it's gonna waste a little material in the middle of where your earrings cut, but I'll waste a little bit of heat bond in between to save from having to line stuff up and heat bond afterwards or glue or anything like that that you would do um, after the fact. So um, air tube, I cut most of this on the denim bonded setting because it is bonded. I create custom settings for other materials. Um, I use a deep cut blade. I usually always use a strong grip mat, but I just had that new green one and it was extra sticky. So I decided to use that and it worked fine. But um, that's it guys. If you have any questions, please let me know. Um, message me. I'm always happy to help. Um, I can do little videos, you know, if you need it um, about materials or 
anything like that. So just let me know if you need any help and I'll be happy to do what I can. I don't always have the answers, but I can try. <laughs> so anyway, thanks guys for watching. I'm sorry it took me so long to get to this, but you know, life happens. <laughs> so um, like I said, if you have any questions, just let me know. Thanks guys.